know what that smell is? That's nature. Come take a walk with me through the forest, through the wonderful trees. And look around, take in everything with your senses. All the different shapes and colors and arrangements and just wonderful sights and smells and sounds of a game about science. My Blue Orange game is called Photosynthesis. Sometimes we're not even focused on the game itself. We lose track in all the wonderful components and all the little bits and the names on the box and we forget about the beautiful simplicity of a game and how its mechanics play with the theme. And that is today what we're looking at in a game called Photosynthesis by Blue Orange Games. Does that theme in fact make sense? Or are these 3D trees in four different colors really just enough to sell the game? Let's find out right now because these things are pretty incredible. Look at this. It's like we're walking through the forest, just like that. Let's look right now. So photosynthesis, what is it, right? You did, I showed you that little thing where you go through the trees. It's not about going through the trees, it's about planting trees. It's about using science and stuff to plant trees and have the best grove or forest or arbor or whatever you want to call it out there. And the question is, what kind of game is it? Well, it's kind of area control. It's kind of economy management. It's really kind of a weird amalgam of those two. How does it play? Well, it plays just like this. And I think you're going to really enjoy just the simplicity of the mechanics. But the depth that this game has. Let's take a look right now how you play photosynthesis and see is it worth your time. So obviously the first thing people do when they see photosynthesis is they stop and they look at the components, right? But if the components are not enough to sell the game, you gotta look at how the game plays and see if it's worth checking out. So let's look at how the game even plays. First of all, everyone starts by putting one of their smallest trees on one of the outside spaces with a one seed marker on the edge of the board. Obviously I'm covering here, but that's so you can see your player board. Everyone gets a unique player board also themed to match your tree style, which my goodness, that was a brilliant idea. But uh, you can see those here. This is where all of your things that you can buy go, all the different trees, the big ones, medium ones, the little ones, and seeds go. This is your sun point life tracker, your photo, you know, kind of your sun tracker. Uh, tell you how many points you get to spend. Basically, these are your action points based on how many you accrue during the round. How that works is you, uh, well, I'll tell you that in just a second, but the way it works is you place one of your small trees out. These are available to use. These have to be bought with one of the actions to buy them. So how do you get points? Well, first of all, you notice around the edge of the board, there's this sun tracker, and this is pretty great. It's got arrows to match up to each one of the columns or rows, depending on which way you're sitting, it lines up. So obviously this arrow points across here, this arrow points across here, 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 here. Why does that matter? Well, you'll notice, normally I'm pretty good about keeping my lighting in frame uh, and doing a better job with lighting, but I actually wanted to show you something interesting about this. Let's just say, for instance, that the sun tracker was here in the top left corner. Well, notice how in real life that this tree is casting a shadow across these three spaces. Well, just like that in the game, tall trees cast shadows three spaces. Your trees, if in a shadow, do not get sun points. It's a very interesting mechanic because your trees are going to stay in the same place until they mature and die, but the sun rotates. So now this tree is currently going to be getting points. When the sun's here, it doesn't, obviously, because that's the way the shadow works. These have a one space shadow. Medium trees have a two space shadow. Seeds obviously have none. And tall trees have three. So the sun moves around. You collect points based on what's there. So you can see right here in the photosynthesis phase that one point for a small tree, two points for a medium tree, three points for a large tree. So currently, let's just say that I had trees that look kind of like this out on the board right now. Uh, right now, I would only get one, two, three because these are in the shadow. Now, if the sun's here, when the sun rotates to here, I would get one, because this is not blocked by a smaller tree. One, two, three, four, five. I would get five points. Seedlings do not count. So you'd move your tracker up to five. Now, you'll eventually get a lot of points for this. The things you spend your um, sun points on are, first of all, you can buy things from lowest to highest. So down here on your player board, you can buy a seed for a point, you know, or when they get up here, they're two points. You can buy a small tree, and when you buy them, they become available to use. You can buy a small tree for two, two, three, three. This is three, three, four for small uh, medium trees, and then four and five for the large trees. You can buy those to use. Also, down here, you can upgrade a seed on the board 
for one point into a small tree. So when you have a little seedling that gets out here, one of the other things you can do, by the way, is that, uh, well, I'll talk about that in a minute, but let's just say you have a seedling sitting here. You can cash in a point here to turn this seedling into a small tree. Then likewise, from a small tree, two points to a medium tree. Let's just say you did that. And then if you had it available over here, three points to take a medium tree to a large tree. And then lastly, but not least, four points to end the tree's life cycle and score points for it. So notice that they're sitting on these shapes, right? This is a three leaf shape. The middle's got a four. These determine how many points you get. So you make stacks of these face down based on the amount of leaves on them. So if you've got a two leaf score, you take the top two leaf score, it's 13 points. Some of them are worth more, things like that, 14, right? Uh, these are just the round trackers. But there's also, so the four point one here, the four leaf one, 22 points. Based on where you are, you take that scoring marker and you keep track. By the end of the game, who has the most points wins. One other action you can do is to drop seeds. The same range as the shadows. You, a small tree can drop a seed one space away. Medium tree can drop it two spaces away. Large tree can drop it one, two, three spaces away. And that's how the game works. That's all the mechanics of the game. The sun's gonna keep moving around. There's one thing to note in the expert variant or the advanced variant. There's one thing to note that you cannot grow. I wanna read it to make sure I have it. In the advanced version, it says, you cannot grow or plant a seed when a tree is in the shadow of another tree. I recommend playing this way if you want a much more tense game. It's, it's a little bit harder like that, but it definitely makes it worth more. There's the more at stake when you do that. If you don't play that way and you just get to place everything out, it feels a little bit shallow or a little bit simpler, and I don't recommend doing it that way. I think you should play with the advanced variant, um, even your first game, honestly, because it's not that hard of a concept. Okay, well, the sun is moving around, it's moving around, and this, like I said, this has arrows on it, so you know which one is in shadow. And just kind of knowing and planning ahead for, well, this is coming around, so I need to be careful. So it's just one of those things where um, a little planning will help you there, but I really think it's better to play with this advanced variant of not being able to plant or grow something that's in someone else's shadow. It just makes the game a little bit spicier, and I like that. So let's look at what else is involved in this game, and should you play this game. So trust me, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, man, it's got to be a pain to put those trees together every time. Surely that can't all fit in this box, can it? Oh, contraire. Check this out. First of all, instruction sheet. Individual player boards right. The sun board. The board board. And then what, what is this? Wait, what are these cardboard pieces? No, when you open this box, they are not trash. Put in there as a spacer. These cardboard pieces come with the box, and they separate all the trees by color. Put everybody's color in one spot, and then they have this neat little cutout where the board fits, and then the individual player boards fit on top, and then you shut the box flat, flush, and it never spills, it never gets into each other. This is brilliant designing because it does not cost much to put these cardboard pieces in here versus you know plastic or something like that, but they're very efficient. They do their job in a wonderful way. So kudos to Blue Orange Games for giving us a, a box divider it doesn't involve bags, and I love it, because this is solid. Very well done, Blue Orange. Very well indeed. So let's do as no one actually has said in a serious manner ever in life. Let's talk turkey about photosynthesis, or I should say let's talk light cycles of plants, because here's what the deal is. You look at this game on the offset, and you go, man, those components are neat. That's enough for me to try this game. Then you go, wait a minute, is it enough for me to keep it in the collection though because of those components? And no, no, the components are not enough to keep in the collection, but you know what is? The fact that this game is great. The fact that this game is really well thought out and strategic, even when the areas that you think aren't going to be strategic, they are. Like where you throw your seeds out. Well, you could just throw it out for the one that has more points, but the fact is, if you do that, you might not, because of the way the sun's coming around, you might not get any sun points for that for a while, so it might actually slow down your economy. The economy system in this game is great because that sun will continue rotating because you know predictably where the sun's gonna be, kind of like in life. You know where you're going to end up with more money or not more money. So you see someone trying to plant here, well, you can kind of block them and get the sunlight if you can. You know, it's one of those games where um, thinking ahead is kind of key and being able to calculate where that sun is going to be is really key. One thing I forgot to mention though is uh, in this game you should probably know that if you have done something on a space you cannot do another thing on that space. What that means is you can't throw out a seed onto a space and then grow that seed into a small tree in the same turn. Just so we're clear. I didn't mention that in the explanation but you can't do that. So photosynthesis. Blue Orange Games. 
Hjalmar Hach, Sabrina Miramon. Art, fantastic. Components, incredible. Game itself, really engaging. I actually really like this. And Blue Orange did 19, uh, New York 1901, and uh, it, was, it was okay. It was probably a six to me. Uh, not a bad game by any means. It just wasn't for me in the sense, only because it had that weird mechanic where you could uh, place your little worker dudes out there and then immediately build. It almost felt like there was never a time when you would ever just place your workers out there. And that's just my only quibble, but really pretty game as well, right? Great mechanics, great box. This one, boom, this game is great. Blue Orange Games Photosynthesis. If you can find this, you need to get your hands on this game and play it because if you don't play with that advanced variant, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, you know, that, that uh, gateway game, right? Ticket to ride, that sort of thing. This is it. I mean, when people see these trees, they go, wait, 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 you're not playing with a metal shoe. You're not rolling dice to get park place and cheap cardboard pieces of paper. No, you're not. You're playing with full, wonderfully detailed trees that each color is different. And not only is it a different color tree, they could have done that. No, it's a different type of tree. One of them is more like a pine tree. One of them is more like a maple or an oak tree. It's beautiful. Photosynthesis is a win for me. It's definitely like an eight and a half. That's, yeah, that's uh, this game, man. Go get it, go get it. It's a great game. Awesome, awesome game. Photosynthesis, Blue Orange Games. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.